will win a Super Bowl in the next three years under Tomlin? No, I'm not. But I'm happy for him, and I'm conf I'm happy for him, and I'm confident that they made the right decision in keeping him because I think he's one of the best coaches in the National Football League, and I think there's something to be said about not having a losing season in 17 years. This man is is something special, and, and he deserves his bag, and I'm happy for him. I'm proud of him. I'm proud of who he is and how he represents everything he represents. Having said that. Um, it's no knock against him that I don't see the Steelers winning the Super Bowl in three years. I hope I'm wrong. I love the fact that Russell Wilson and obviously Justin Fields is there, Pickens is there, Frymuth is there, Najee Harris is there, along with others. I get all of that T.J. Watt and the crew, but when I look at the rest of the AFC, Shannon, I think about Kansas City. I think about Baltimore. I think about Joe Burrow coming back for Cincinnati. I think about Cleveland, who I believe was knocking on the door. We see what Houston Buffalo. has done to upgrade themselves. Buffalo, we can't sleep on them. The New York Jets with Aaron Rodgers and all of that stuff, we can't sleep on any of that. Texans. There's so many obstacles. There's so many obstacles. I mentioned this head to Texans, the Houston Texans. There's so many obstacles, Shannon. I can't look at that and say, yo, I see a Super Bowl. But I do see them as a playoff team. I do see them contending. And I'm happy that Mike Tomlin has got his extension. Okay. So, let's talk about this because we know Steelers fans are incredibly protective of Mike Tomlin. Now, to be clear, I think this is a bad move. But before the Steelers fans go all nuts, I'm going to give both sides of the argument, okay, of why you keep him versus why you either let him go or just see what happens. Listen. I understand it sounds cool and sounds nice to say you never had a losing season in 17 seasons or whatever. That does not matter. It does not matter. What matters is winning, winning playoff games, winning Super Bowls. That's what matters. It doesn't matter if Andy Reid has had a handful of losing seasons or Bill Belichick. It does not matter. Okay? The Cowboys three straight 12 win series and they get blown out in the playoffs they, they haven't been to an nfc championship game in decades it just doesn't matter so when you do this when you when, you, when that's when you're relying on he's never had a losing season, it's impressive i'm not saying that mike tomlin is a bum i'm not saying mike tomlin's the worst coach ever and should never coach to be very clear i'm not saying any of that but you can't just keep using that whole thing because that's all anyone ever says about him. He's never had a losing season. Yeah, and that's really impressive. But what has he done? Especially like in the last like 10 years in the playoff games. I mean, who has he beaten in the playoffs? Like no one. No name quarterbacks. They haven't had a legit offense in forever. The Steelers have not been relevant for years and years and years. And I lived in Pittsburgh. I know how much they love football, how passionate they are, and how they held themselves to a higher standard of not just having a winning season. They are all about the rings. They have the buses that have the hand, the hand with all the rings on it. They are ring counters, Super Bowl counters. They, are, they're, they don't care about some of these other things. It's all about winning championships, being the Super Bowl winners. I was there when they won their last Super Bowl. Believe me, none of those fans would have been like, well, hey, you know, we made it to the Super Bowl, and that's all that counts. It was a great season. They are do-or-die fans. They care a lot. So this whole idea that, like, as long as you're kind of competitive, that's good enough, and it's not. So that's why I wholeheartedly like don't necessarily agree with this. And again, the NFL has transitioned to an offensive-driven league. That's the reality. They've literally changed rules. Okay? Offensive coaches undeniably do better than defensive coaches. It was something like, I don't remember exactly what the, the real numbers were, but there was like only like one or two defensive head coaches in the playoffs last season. Everything is just dominated by smart offensive head coaches. They can, they can make an average quarterback work. They can fix the offensive lines in a season. They are competitive. They're never out of a game. Yes, defense matters. Yet people want to now point to what D'Amico did with Houston Texans. There will always be outliers. But you also have to hope that you have an amazing OC 
and have an amazing quarterback. Look what Shane Steichen was doing with Garner Minshew. That's incredible. So it's just you an offensive head coach gives you the advantage. The pl- having an elite play caller gives you the advantage, especially because if you're relying on your OC and you're a defensive head coach, if he's a great OC and is making moves, He's going to be out the door in a few seasons. He's going to get a head coaching job. And then you're back starting to get ground zero again. That's the problem. And that's the problem that the Steelers run in. Their offense has been nothing for years. That's Mike Tomlin's fault. It just is. It's his fault for not either being an offensive head coach, which, you know, that's obviously a hard one, but also not hiring the right coordinators then and building the offense and emphasizing that. Because defensive head coaches think it's just all about grit and hard work, and it's all about defense. Defense wins championships. Just not anymore. Everyone wants to point to how the also how uh, the Kansas City Chiefs won and how Patrick Mahomes had a down year and the defense led them. Absolutely. Absolutely. But also, Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, and Travis Kelsey. They all stepped up and needed to be elite in when the moments mattered most. You take away Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, I don't care how amazing that Kansas City Chiefs defense is, they're still not winning. You know, the the Ravens had an unbelievable defense. Unbelievable defense and a great offense. You know how 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 they lost and how the Chiefs won? Because Andy Reid outcoached. Harbaugh, out game planned. Harbaugh, Patrick Mahomes outplayed Lamar Jackson. He made the throws when it mattered. Travis Kelsey stepped up with some diving catches when it mattered. So, offense matters. So that's now that argument. The other argument is, a lot of coaches get fired when they shouldn't. A lot of times, teams lose. And they don't win. They don't have playoff success. Or they do have losing seasons. And we know a coach is really great. But they still fire him. Andy Reid was fired. Bill Belichick can't get a job right now. And it's like, do we really think that those two coaches aren't good or weren't good? Of course not. I mean, we see this a lot. Phil Jackson getting forced out. I mean, like, there's just so many stories of this. It's not always the right move. And sometimes the front office, the GM, the fans, whatever, they they, they need like an answer. We need an answer to why we lost. And you got to point to someone. And it's not so much a scapegoat, but they just need to blame someone. They need to have a frame around the image that they're seeing. So we point at the coach. And now Mike Tomlin is a great coach. He is a great coach. And so he has had a tremendous amount of success. And the struggles may have nothing to do with him. It may be their inability to draft a legitimate quarterback. Because I'm pretty sure the Steelers would be a lot better if they had C.J. Stroud. If they had Jordan Love. Josh Allen. Obviously Patrick Mahomes. Joe Burrow. So you could you could make the argument that just because the Steelers have underperformed for like essentially the last 10 years or so. Whenever the heck they're their last like legitimate, genuine playoff win against a good quarterback, a good team was. Because I know they beat Alex Smith, but the Steelers didn't even score a single touchdown that game. They won on like six field goals. Where are, like, where are the Steelers then in that regard? Where do you blame Mike Tomlin for the lack of actual playoff and Super Bowl success? Because if not then you don't fire him just because that's what organizations do. You do hold on to him because you trust the, 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 the team that he builds outside of obviously the quarterback situation. Um, And you trust his ability to run a franchise because a lot of coaches don't know how to do that. There's a lot of great football minds out there, whether offensively or defensively, but they can't run a team. And you know, Mike Tomlin can do that. You know, Mike Tomlin's players are, prepared they're attuned to the fine details they're motivated they respect him right he has the respect he has the admiration 
He doesn't lose the locker room. He doesn't have any controversy. So keeping Mike Tomlin is also the right call in that regard as well. But here's the reality. Let's say they get that offense going now with a Russ, with the Justin Fields or whoever. It's not going to be because of Mike Tomlin. It's going to be because of the OC. And they just hired their new OC who was the fired coach. And he's and, and if they really turn that around, if they're able to reinvent Russ or Justin Fields, he's getting another head coaching job offer instantly. Because they're going to be like, look what you did. Look how you turned around Russ. You saved Russ's career. You saved Justin Fields' career. Boom. And then again, where does Mike Tomlin go from there? That's the problem. That will always be the problem. So that's why I lean absolutely towards the Steelers just being like, okay, Mike, let's see what you got. We're not going to extend you. Let's just see. And then potentially moving on, you try to get the OC from the Texans. You try to get the OC from the Lions, you know, like Ben Johnson. You, you, you try to do these more aggressive moves because when, you, when, you, when you've never had a losing season, but you lack playoff success, Super Bowl success, especially for the last 10 years, you're not playing to win. You're playing not to lose. And those are two very different things. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think? Do you think that this was smart by the Pittsburgh Steelers to keep Mike Tomlin? Do you think they should have moved on from him? Do you think the extension makes sense? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much. See you next time.